When a major celebrity dies, both their fans and their production suffer, and in some cases suffer a lot. To understand what happens both to the fans and the productions, I have author and commentator Sherry Williams on the line from Hollywood. Thanks for coming in today, Sherry. Oh, it's my pleasure, as always. You know, even though we've never met these celebrities, and even if, and even if they lived, we still wouldn't meet them, we sometimes take their deaths very hard. Why do you think that is? Well, as fans, you know, we learn to care about our favorite stars and their movies, their larger-than-life personas. We seem to identify with them and the characters they play in films. You know, they, they just become part of our lives. Well, you know, I can agree that that's true for young fans. Like, they all liked Westerns, and now they all think strongly of Wonder Woman, and they idolize her. But are you suggesting that it's true for adults? Well, I know that I, uh, there's certain, you know, there's certain characters I love, and I go, oh, God, yes, that's just how I felt, or that's just how I looked, or, and then there are others that I just don't care about. So that's just coming from my point of view, and, and I'm certainly an adult. <laughs> right. The coroner who examined Carrie Fisher uh, recently released his findings. She had died in December, but it took over six months for the coroner to assemble and release the findings. And he said there were signs of what he delicately called multiple drug intake, but he covered it by saying that their significance in terms of her death was unclear. So her fans knew the drug history and they thought she was clean. So is there some kind of breaking of faith here? Well, you know, it was, I thought, I'm pretty sure it was proven that she had a lot of cocaine and other drugs in her system. And to many people, you know, she'd become a role model of sobriety. Carrie was immensely popular, and people just loved that she was able to accomplish being clean and sober. I think her fans might have felt duped. It was a great disappointment and quite sad for those who had been cheering her on all this time. And that, that adds to the tragedy, it's, it's, as well as the obvious death that all these other things add to it. The death of a star in Hollywood has huge implications for a motion picture when they're involved in it. How did Star Wars producers work around her death? Well, as you know, her iconic Princess Leia is set to appear in the next two Star Wars films, but she'll either be written out of the script or she'll be computer generized or generated, or the other option is they can reduce her role, and that could mean Princess Leia would only appear in glimpses. And that adds to the tragedy as well, because she's one of these characters that everybody recognizes. I mean, nobody needs an explanation of who Princess Leia is. Last oh December, my gosh, no. Last December was really big for the fans. Debbie Reynolds died after, right afterwards, but little was said about her death. What do you make of that? Well, perhaps because Star Wars was being marketed so heavily that Carrie Fisher's death, you know, was a bigger payoff at the box office than her mom. So it could have been, if they had focused on Debbie Riddles, it might have overshadowed Carrie a bit, and they didn't really want it to go that way, again, for the box office, I believe. Mm. Back to the question of breaking of faith. Did Robin Williams, in a sense, break faith with his fans when he committed suicide in 2014? Oh, that's such a good question. You know, he was so beloved by most everyone because of the classic characters he played, and, of course, we'll never forget uh, when he was, um, you know, Peter Pan and just millions of them. But it, it was just shocking to the public that he took his own life. But, you know, his wife came out and softened the blow by saying that he had dementia and that he was actually losing his mind. So I think the fans probably forgave him for not wanting to deteriorate before their eyes. So that I think you're saying there's no breaking of faith there. Well, I know that I was shocked and very sad, and all of the different characters flashed before my eyes, but when I thought how sad it would be for him to lose his mind, his body deteriorate, I, I, can, I, could, I could understand where he was coming from, and I, I forgave him, personally. <laughs> um, Philip Seymour Hoffman had a great track record. 
and many fans, countless fans. But his death didn't attract the huge outpourings of grief in Hollywood and across the country that Robin Williams' death attracted. How would you explain that? Well, I, like I said, I think Robin Williams played these beloved characters that we all knew uh, for many years, and Hoffman uh, played characters with deep emotional issues. Uh, I think Hoffman was an outstanding actor, one of my very favorites, and I was crushed when he died. But, and as you know, he was brilliant. But you just didn't love him the way that you loved Robin Williams. So that's that's the big difference. It's the the love and the and the identification that some people feel for some whole I mean, icons and not necessarily intellectually. Life. Yes, I'm sorry. Intellectually, he was brilliant, but on a heart level, I don't think you loved him the way that you loved Robin Williams, who'd been around for since we were very young. Right. And just quickly, in January 2008, Heath Ledger died of a drug overdose. Um, how did they? fill in the spots in the film Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. Uh, well, that's really interesting because he was replaced with Jude Law, Do Johnny Depp, and Colin Farrell in the three fantasy sequences, and it was a brilliant rewrite using the right. premise that everyone's face changes when they enter a dream world. Right. I'll have to stop you there. I want to thank Sherry Williams for coming in today to explain some of what we feel when we lose a Hollywood icon and why we feel it. I've been talking to Sherry Williams in Hollywood. That wraps up this edition of American Narratives. Please join me for the next edition as we continue helping you make sense of the news.